Have you ever wondered how you might get out from behind your own ego? The reason I ask is because this is what um, a, a client asked recently. How do I get out of my own ego? And I kind of laughed about the question and I thought it might be um, useful as a, as a subject for a video. Because of course it begs the question to start with, well, what is this ego that you want to get out from behind? I'm reasonably sure it was Freud that coined the phrase of the ego. But of course, we've been grappling with this idea of what we are and who we are and who is this voice inside of our head. Well, certainly since the Stoics and, uh, and, and doubtless before that as well. But I think what she was trying to say, I think the real question was, well, maybe like a statement, it's kind of noisy in here. How do I get out from the noise? You know, how do I see what I am beneath the noise? Which is a fantastic question, okay? Because often the, the voices inside of our head, they feel like us. We kind of self-identify with them. And there can be many of these voices and some of them seem to be a little bit louder than the others. And we may particularly identify with those. Or we may identify with, with one of the ones which is, which is quieter. But for me, when I think about I, I, let's change the word ego to self, okay? When I think about what I am, I kind of feel as though I'm the one observing the voices. And you can go down that one a long way, right? You can go to, okay, but there is an observer of the observer, obviously, because otherwise you wouldn't be thinking about it. And if there's an observer of the observer, then there has to be an observer of the observer of the observer of the, the conversation, and so on and so forth. And you can go there forever. But I think, or at least for me, the way to get out from the inner critic, get out from the inner monologue, the inner voice or voices, is to become friends with them. Okay, Rather than trying to push back against them and say, oh, come on, can you not give me a moment? If you become at one with all of you, so if you send kind of all of your kindness, all of your goodwill, all of your everything to all of those parts, so that they, they don't really have anything to complain about, right? They're just, they're just kind of existing, coexisting with you, let's say. If you can get to that point, then they don't need to shout so loud and you can have a reasonable conversation with them, okay? So at that point, you can ask their permission to just kind of go quiet for a bit. Do you mind if you just kind of jump out my mind and sit over there, all you voices, and kind of have a moment? And because you're all on the same side, they, whatever they is, that story, trusts you and it all feels okay. And you can have a little internal dialogue as to the fact that, you know, you're not getting rid of them. You're just, you're just wanting a moment by yourself. And you'd be surprised, actually, how effective that can be. Now, for me personally, I, I found the ceremony of placing myself in self-hypnosis to be a fantastic vehicle for getting there, right? And I've habituated it, so it's something that I can do now really, really... Well, it's not even a case of doing it easily. It's, it's actually um, a delightful, almost indulgent way of, of self-care. So that can be incredibly helpful. But the ceremony in itself is one of quietening the mind, okay? Which is no different to inviting those parts of you that are loud from quietening down. Pick your, your vehicle, I guess, is what I'm saying. Whatever works for you, works. Um, but for me, that's the way that you get out from behind your ego. You ask it to just kind of give you a moment. And it'll only do that if it feels safe. So how do you make it feel safe? 
by making friends with all of it. Okay, now that might be a big stretch. Some of you might think, oh, how on earth am I going to do that? And maybe that's, that's, a, that's a step-by-step process. But the end result is you have complete peace inside your mind when you choose to have it. It doesn't mean to say you have it all the time, but when you choose to, you can go quiet. You know, meditation, mindfulness, these are another way. If you observe one thing to the exclusion of all others, that's a nice way of silencing your mind. Sport can be a fantastic way to go beyond your ego because you, you quieten the distractions by shifting your physiology. So there are many, many ways to do it, yeah? They all take a choice, all take a choice. The question is who's in control, right? Who's the director of the organism? And, uh, and that doesn't mean to sound pious. It doesn't mean to say that it's going to be an omnipotent person who is always in charge. Let's assume that as an organism, things are less predictable than a mechanism. But by making that choice and, and finding a consensus, whereas all parts of you feel welcome, useful, beneficial, part of your whole, well, then there's less to rebel against. There's less to push back against. And therefore, they can be quiet for a little while. <laughs> Does that make sense? I know it sounds a little bit, a little bit curious. But it feels good. And when things feel good, when they feel like coming home, I tend to think they're right. And that's just my opinion. You can have your own. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.